Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting an imaginary seascape, a sort of calm old-fashioned scene um, as night falls and an old-fashioned ship um, sailing through the sea with a few seagulls just silhouetted against the fading light. I'm going to keep it really simple, something that um, that beginners could try. Um, I just think with this wet in wet process for painting a dramatic sky like this, you have to really use plenty of paint, um, preferably good quality cotton paper, um, so that it soaks in plenty of water to start with, and then trust the process. Trust that your paint marks will soften and diffuse, and don't be afraid to tilt your board to pick it up and move it around to help the paint to run in the direction that you want it. I've used my large harky brush to thoroughly wet my sky. This harky brush holds lots of water so even though it looks like I'm only passing it over the paper a few times it's thoroughly soaking the paper and this Saunders Waterford cold press paper stays wet for a long time. This is a band of quite um, weak, watery, raw sienna across the middle of the paper. There's a little bit of it going into the sea area across the horizon. Now this is very thick paint, almost tube consistency, just with a little bit of water in the harky brush and it's sepia and indigo. Don't be worried if it looks streaky to start with. Remember, it's trusting the process of wet in wet painting um, now this is some Payne's Grey in there as well. I'm really trying to get plenty of colour and rich darks into the top of the sky. So it looks like a sort of either a storm coming in uh, over the sea or, or just nightfall and lots of clouds darkening up. And also remember that watercolour dries a lot lighter so you need to put it on much darker than you'd imagine. Now I'm playing around with the tips of my harky brush here to encourage the paint in the sort of direction that I want it to go to break up some of those um, overt diagonal streaks and lines but to try and keep that look of layers of cloud coming in so as it diffuses then I'll, and softens, I should get um, a nice bank of cloud. To encourage the paint to run across that way, um, across the paper, rather than running down, I've turned my board around. I'm just letting it rest like that for a little while. This is my three quarter inch synthetic flat brush and I find it very useful to use damp, it mustn't be wet, but just damp to just feather the paint out a little bit and get some of those smaller clouds close to the horizon line. You see it's pulling the paint out from where there's plenty of thick paint, it's moving it around a little bit so I can get some paler marks in that dark bank of cloud as well. I think I quite like that at the moment. I'll run a clean damp brush across the horizon line just to straighten it up a little bit but to take off the bead of uh, water that's run down and collected there as my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees so the paint is running down um, slowly. Now again with my clean damp flat brush I'm trying to get a bit of a bit more texture in that bank of cloud. I don't want too much. You can see that as it's all still wet, those marks that I put into the, the brown bit in the sort of top corner are already softening and fading. And I've brought some little tiny feathery clouds across near my horizon. This is my sea and I'm establishing it with very thick indigo paint straight across the bottom with only a couple of brush strokes to keep that nice and clean and some dry brush sparkle across the bottom. If you can get that dry brush across the very bottom edge like that, then it looks like the last of the evening sun just sparkling on the sea and you don't have to do anything else other than that. I mean, that's 
That's the sea virtually painted in the front. Again, a little bit more texture through the sea, uh, sky rather, trying not to overdo it. Um, that's the problem with skies. It can be very tempting to fiddle around too much, but as soon as you get it looking almost right, leave it alone. If you think to yourself, oh, I'll just do another few bits, that's often when you can overwork a sky. So best to leave it alone. And I've just cleaned up the horizon line with a clean, damp, flat brush. I'm going to um, bring a paler brush full of indigo nice and flat to establish my horizon line where my sky finishes and my sea starts. And I think I'm reasonably happy with that so far. I think as that dries, it'll soften out and give me the effects that I'm looking for. But there's enough, um, enough dark, deep colours in the sky to give me that evening look. So now I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry completely. It's completely dry and as you can see I've penciled in um, a very simple shape for um, a galleon or ship, old fashioned ship with its um, sails rolled up. Um, if you want to pause it here you can copy that um, outline if you like. And there will be a reference photograph of that outline in full silhouette on my Patreon site. So if you want to come along and join us on Patreon, please follow the link below. I've mixed up a very rich but inky consistency mixture of um, Payne's Grey and sepia. So it's a very, very blackish brown. It's very dark. I'm just looking to block in a silhouette here. So to start with, I'm going to use my small calligraphy brush to outline the hull and make sure I get that right first. I've kind of made this ship up just from imagination and from experience of, of painting quite a few old fashioned ships over the past three years that I've been painting. It's one of my favorite things to, to doodle with. I just think it's such a romantic image. So sorry if any of you maritime experts out there, sorry if I've got the masks wrong, but I'm hoping that it's just gonna look convincing enough to be okay. Now that I've got my outline right for the hull, I'm using my flat brush to block it in. And then the tips of the flat brush and I will slowly work up and paint the masts in, trying to keep them nice and straight. rather than too precise and exact. Now back to my small calligraphy brush. I'm just going to put in these sort of cross beams. And this kind of lumpy shape of the rolled up sails. Just kind of bulging down a little bit where they've been rolled up. I might put another one between those two, but I'm going to finish the ship and see how it looks first, because I'm trying to make sure that I've got enough of those cross beams and rolled up sails for both of the, both of the masts, if you see what I mean. I'm just keeping these lines and rolled up masts nice and sketchy with kind of like 
little dots at the end, so it almost sort of implies that sort of possibly finials or tie-off points for the rigging, that sort of thing. As I say often in this kind of painting, it's something and nothing. It's something for the viewer to perceive as part of the ship, hopefully, if all goes well. Just a little bit of detail at the top of the hull, maybe some lumps and bumps to represent stuff on the deck, people, that kind of thing. And now using that same dark mixture, I'm going to use the flat brush, it's a three quarter inch flat brush, to run some horizontal lines um, underneath the boat for sort of a reflection, but also to run across to the side to make it look like it's the sort of ripple marks, just to suggest that movement in, across the sea. As I say, this is a nice, simple, quick painting. It might take a bit of practice, but it's the sort of thing that, um, that anybody, a beginner or intermediate, could, um, could, could approach and, um, and try. And, and basically, it's the sort of painting that you could then add any more detail that you wanted. You could put several ships in the sea. You could add headlands, um, lots of birds, um, all sorts of things. You could even paint a more detailed ship, not in silhouette, so that you could see the kind of shapes of the bow or the stern, uh, that sort of thing. This is a flag just on the top. I think that adds a nice little detail to take away from all those horizontals and verticals. And then using my small calligraphy brush, which has a really nice point, going to be brave and just put the rigging in and that's the best way to do rigging is just to roughly decide where you want it and then just let the brush go um, without overthinking it too much. If you overthink it and hesitate then you could possibly end up having a mark that's too dark. Uh, you just want hit and miss, light marks, sketchy marks um, all over the place really just linking the various points of the mass with the ship. Maybe just the hint of a sort of ladder, um, rope ladder or something. I'm still looking at that gap between the top two cross beams and wondering whether I need another another mast in there but I think I'm still going to leave it for a little bit longer and just finish everything <coughs> excuse me finish everything else off and probably remove the tape and see how it looks with the tape off. I want a few birds in the sky just simple faint Payne's grey Simple brush strokes just to create a, a few birds. Putting them at a sort of slight angle so it looks like that they are coming in, um, following the sort of direction that the wind is blowing those clouds. Some slightly smaller than others and then they are further back in the distance. Now I'm going to remove the tape and see how it looks with its nice clean white border. This can help us to see it with fresh eyes um, and it kind of helps us to see if everything's okay and if the painting's looking finished. I'm pulling the tape away from the painting because sometimes masking tape can 
catch and, and, and maybe tear the paper. So if you pull it away, you won't tear into your painting. Now I'm pretty pleased with this. I think it's it's worked out really well for such a quick and simple painting. I think it's very effective, but I think a couple of adjustments. I want to add the little flag to the second mast, the smaller mast, and I am going to add in one more crossbeam and a rolled up mask here. Mast. I keep saying mask. <laughs> I just think that sort of balances things out a little bit more. So here's the finished painting. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you'll give this a try or something similar or just use the same method with different colours, any brushes that you like. There's no wrong or right way to paint a scene like this. Um, just use your imagination and enjoy yourself. So thanks again for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.